Tell me if I took the right drugs, then I won't die. Rockstar status in the cut with a auto. Matic, give it up, this is stick up. Run it, run it up, get your bricks up. Dummy, run them all. Hey, what's up, guys? Back again with another video in the C series. I am back from the dead for the 50th time, and uh, we're going to be continuing the C series so that we can, uh, you know, learn more, more C, obviously, right? So I made a new project here. Oh, yeah, what we're going to learn is reference variables. That's important to know. We're going to be learning reference variables, and uh, yeah, so let's get our project set up here. Um, and uh, reference variables are a thing that you can use with functions, uh, function parameters, and they allow you to um, basically access a variable inside of a function, but also whenever you alter the variable inside the function, you're altering the variable outside the function. So I'll explain that in a second, so just give me one second, let's uh, just get all this out of my face, and uh, open this up a little bit, why is this red? Oh, okay, don't worry about that. So, anyway, we got a project here, and uh, let's go ahead and make a simple function here, so just so we can refresh our memory on what functions, uh, or how they work. So we're going to make a function called say something, and it's just going to just be, well, it's going to take, we need a variable here, so we're going to have a string of name, or a word, so we're going to say that word. Uh, we're going to say, here is the magic word and then we're going to output word, okay? So all we're doing here is basically taking this parameter here that was passed into this function and then outputting it right here within the C out statement, okay? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And um, yeah, okay, so let's test this out. We'll do, go back to main and we'll do say something. We'll call the function and we need a variable to use inside of there. Of course, we could type something inside of here if we want to, but let's just make a variable. We're going to call it uh, we'll just make it name also, or just word also, I mean. So string word is equal to um, um, perpendicular. Per, per, pe, wait, perpendicular. I know I did not spell that right, but let's just pretend I spelled that right. And so we're going to pass in word to say something. There we go. And so now it should say the word. Here's the magic word, perpendicular. And so that should work, so let's uh, run this now, see what happens. And, come on, let's go. Uh-huh, 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 yep, very nice. There we go, so we get, here's the magic word, perpendicular, very nice. And um, let's say that we want to alter this word before it gets, or let's change this to um, a number, just because it'll be easier. So we'll do int, int word, and we'll make this int word, and we're going to set int to 15 by default. And then before it's outputted right here, we're going to do word times 6. Did I do that right? Word times 6. Uh, no, uh, well, we're going to do word is equal to word times 6. That probably makes a little more sense. Um, anyway, so we're going to alter that uh, variable here, the word variable that we got passed in. And then um, it should be able to say, here is the magic word, or the word, and then it's going to be the value of what was passed in times 6 right here. Easy peasy. Okay, and you're going to see why I'm showing you this in a second. It's all going to make sense, hopefully. But, yep, so we should get 15 times 6, which is 90, I guess. I'm just going to trust that. Yeah, it makes sense, because um, 15 times 2 is 30, so uh, that, you know, two more times is going to be 90. Um, so let's say that um, we want to, so right here, basically, it's 15, right? The variable is 15, and then once we, oops, and those, once we pass it into the say something function, it's going to be changed to um, 90, 15 times 90, or 15 times 6 is 90, and then we're going to output that, and we're going to see the word, or see, see 90 in there, right? But if we go here and do C out word, after we call the function, it's not going to be 90, it's still going to be 15, because... Of course, we know about the scope of variables. The scope, the scope is basically again where the a variable can be accessed. So if we declare a variable within a block of code, it can only be accessed within that block of code and within blocks of code inside that block of code. So what I mean by that is that the um, the int word variable is basically the scope of this. Okay, even though we're passing something in as that into that function as an argument, 
this is only I'm um, going to be in this scope here. So anything we, any time we alter this variable, it's not going to alter it outside of the function. It's going to alter that variable inside the function anyway. So yeah, we just know that um, even though we're passing in the variable, it's not going to be altered outside of it. It's only going to be altered inside of it. So that's why when we print it out outside, we uh, after we call the function, it's still going to be 15. Okay. So let's say we want to do a reference variable. Okay. A reference variable is basically where um, we pass it in by reference rather than passing it in by value. So by passing it in by value, I just mean that we're passing in this um, variable here into this function as a parameter, but that's not actually ch uh, giving it access to this variable. It's giving it access to the, the value of this variable and then copying it over to this variable here that's part of this function. So if we pass it in by reference, we're actually going to give this function access to the variable that we're passing in meaning that if we alter this variable inside the function, it's actually going to alter the variable that was originally passed in. Okay, so let's, um, let's get some demonstration of that. So how do we make this a reference variable? We go up to here and we put an ampersand, which is the and assign. That's called an ampersand. And you just need to put it before the, the variable name, but after the data type. So it could also be like this if you want to. You could have a space in between. You could have it like that. But most people do this, I believe. Just put it before the, the name of the variable. That's pretty much common, I believe. So yeah, that's going to make it. That's going to denote it as a reference variable. So now that this is a reference variable, if we run this piece of code here, it should say 90 instead of 15 after we call the function. Okay, so let's see if that works. There we go. So now it says here's the magic word 90, but then we're going to call it. Um, we're going to output the the variable word again, and it's going to say 90. So this means that even though we passed in this original variable here into this function, uh, we can even see it has the ampersand little sign here, so it's telling you it's a reference variable. It's also, um, when we do this right here, when we do word is equal to word times six, it's actually doing this is equal to word times six. So basically, um, just to put it simply, like I said, anything that we make a reference variable is basically going to be altered not only inside of the function, but outside of the function. So think of this as the same thing as this. We're passing it by reference. So anything you do to this is actually being done to this. Okay. Hopefully that concept makes sense. It's actually a really simple concept, but yeah, it took a while to explain that, but hopefully that makes sense for you. And um, so yeah, let's play around with this some more. Um, this is also useful in case you want to return multiple things at once, because normally, let's say we make a, uh, oops, let's say, let's open this back up. Let's say we want to, ret we want to return an integer, um, return uh, 56 for some reason, but we also want to return word. Um, we can't actually do like 56 dash word or anything like that. That's just, you can't do that. You can't return multiple things at once. You could do that by making this a reference variable so that you can alter it outside of the function basically. Hopefully that makes sense. But we're going to get plenty of practice with that in the future. We'll have like an example, um, some challenges that um, mess around with that. And yeah, speaking of challenges, we're going to have some challenges in this series so that we can get some real world practice working with the stuff we're learning basically so stay tuned for that anyway so let's make another um, what's it called a another function utilizing a re reference variable just for practice here so we're gonna make a, a, f a function called change name okay and um, this is just gonna be a simple function that allows you to change the name of a variable um, using another name that was provided so let's say we have string name that's going to be the original name and then we're also going to be able to pass in a new name so we want to take this new name and then change the original name using this new name okay pretty simple and we're going to make this the prototype okay so that means we need to go down here and establish the definition for the prototype okay so change name string name string new name open this up here and so now we're going to define this so we're going to say uh, this is pretty simple, so we can just do name is equal to new name, okay? And um, let's get rid of this. We don't really need this anymore. Boom. So let's test this out. Let's try doing, um, let's make a variable here called string and name is equal to uh, Shirley by default. So Shirley is the name of this person. And let's say they go to the courthouse and they're trying to, they're trying to change their name, right? How do we facilitate that? So we can call upon our change name function, obviously. So change name. And um, so we're going to provide the variable for the original name. So name, we're passing that by value. 
and then we're going to pass in a, um, a variable for the new name so we're going to pass that in also by value and we can make another variable for this if we want to or we just type it in that's probably better in this situation so what's going to happen is um, basically we're passing in name and then we're passing in the string of Bob and so we're going to go into here and we're going to say name which is the first uh, argument that was passed in is equal to the uh, value of the second argument that was passed in aka Bob okay pretty simple but um, this is not really going to work because um, this is not a reference variable. So meaning, even though we change it inside of here, it was passed by value. So that means that we're only altering this a variable right here. We're not altering the variable that was actually passed in. Okay, so um, let's, let me show you um, that example. So let's prove that. So we're going to run this here. First, we'll actually output name. We'll do it right here too. So we can see the original name, and then after we can see the, you know, the new name, right? after it was changed. So let's run this now, see what happens. Okay, and we get, boom, we get Shirley, but we also get Shirley again, even though we did the change name function. That's because, again, this first value here is being passed by reference, I mean by uh, value, meaning that the value of this fun the variable that we're passing in is being copied to the value of the parameter within the function. So when we alter it, it's not really altering the value that we pass in, or the variable that we pass in, it's altering the variable that was created for the function, okay? So, so all we gotta do is make this a reference variable, like I said, so put an ampersand, but we also need to put it right here in the prototype, put an ampersand, so now automatically we can see that this ampersand symbol shows up, so IntelliJ knows, or CLion knows that we're working with reference variables now. And by the way, I switched to CLion because I got sick of Visual Studio, it's quite annoying because um, it doesn't really auto-complete your code. It's just not as nice as IntelliJ and CLine. So I would advise you to switch to CLine also. You can actually you can actually just use the Visual Studio compiler within CLine. It automatically knows how to do that for you when you're installing it. But anyway, I recommend you do that. But So yeah, we just made this a reference variable. So this means that instead of changing the value of this variable um, right here, it's actually going to change the value of the variable that this is connected to, which is right here, um, string and name. So since we're passing it into here as a reference variable, it's going to be changing both this one and this one. They're pretty much, or this one, it's pretty much the same exact thing. Okay, just reiterating that so it's stuck in your brain. So anyway, that should fix our problem for us. So let's press play here and see how it works, or if it works. Okay. Three, two, one, there we go. So Shirley and then Bob. So it works, obviously. So that's just um, a simple um, demonstration of how a reference variable works. Okay, so pretty simple. I'm sure you get the concept now. And um, so one more thing I want to show you before we go is actually um, how to use arrays as reference variables. Because arrays are a little different when you're um, using arrays with functions. I'm not sure if I talked about this at all yet. But um, basically this, this, the concept boils down to this. Whenever you use a array, an array as a parameter within a function, it's automatically going to be a reference variable. The entire array is going to be a reference variable. You don't have to do anything special like add an ampersand. So it's really, it's really easier for you. You don't need to do anything special. And uh, yeah, so let me demonstrate that so it actually makes more sense for you. So we're just going to make a simple um, function here that demonstrates this. So void triple array. Oops, sorry for my speaker. Triple array. And we're going to be passing in a array as a parameter, as the first parameter at least. And um, to do that, we just do integer cool array with the with the little brackets, of course. And um, we're also going to be passing in a second variable called integer integer size. And um, I'll explain what that is for in a second. But basically, this array is just going to be taking each element of this array that we pass in and then tripling the value of each element. Okay, pretty simple. So now let's go down here and um, work on the definition for that prototype. So void triple array. Okay, and um, tri void triple array, cool, oh yeah, int cool array, and size. And as you can already see, I did not make, I did not add an ampersand to the front of this, right? But as, you'll, as you're about to see, um, this is gonna be automatically a reference variable. So I'll demonstrate that right now. So let's open this up to define it. And so what we want to do, like I said, is basically triple the value of each element in this array. So we're going to make a for loop here so that we can loop through each element in the array. And we're going to base that loop. Uh, we need to know how many times we want to loop. And we want to base that upon how many elements are in the array. 
That's why we have the size variable here because we cannot magically get the size of this array. There's nothing for that like cool array dot size that I know of at least. There's I don't think there's something you you can't really do that with arrays. You can do that with like vectors and stuff, but with arrays you can't do that. So you need to pass it in um, the size separately. Okay. Anyway, so we're gonna do that now. There we go. And um, so now that we're passing in the size, it's gonna loop the array um, however many times the size is for that array. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that makes sense. But yeah. Anyway, so now we can do cool array i for the index is equal to cool array i for the index times three. So basically this is just gonna get looped through each index of the array and set the value of each element to the current value times three. So it's just tripling everything, right? So before I told you about this, you might think that by default, since we do not have the reference ampersand in front of this, it's basically gonna alter, alter this array inside of the function, but it's not gonna alter this array outside of the function. But let's demonstrate that to prove you wrong. So um, we're gonna make an array here. Obviously we need to make an array to pass in. So we're gonna call this, um, let's call it int array of cool numbers, very specific, is equal to five, three, four, 12, and one, okay? And so now we can test this out by calling upon the function here. So triple array, and we gotta pass in the array. And uh, so to pass in the array, we do, um, we just gotta provide the name of the array, array of cool numbers, and we do not need to provide the brackets on the end like this. So you don't need to add that, okay? So just pass it in just like that. And um, now we just need to pass in the size, which is right here, five, right? So we just type in five, there we go. And um, so it should do its work there, or do its magic there. And, um, and now finally, let's loop through the array one more time just to display each value to see if it was changed or not, okay? So just do that um, five times, obviously, because there's five elements in the array. And for each element, we'll just output the value of each element, basically. Okay, pretty simple. So, <clears throat> so again, just to reiterate what, what's happening here, we're making an array, and we're then we're calling upon the triple array function, and we're passing in an array to this function. And inside this function is taking this array, looping through it, and changing, or and then um, taking each element of this array and, and multiplying it by three, tripling it, right? So, um, like I said, you might expect this to stay the same even after the function is called because it's not a reference variable, or so we think. But as you're about to see, it's actually going to be changed. So let's press run here to see that. So there we go. We get 15, 9, 12, 36, and 3, which are all uh, of these values, but tripled, right? So basically, yeah, I mean, it's a very simple concept, but basically this array here is able to be a reference variable even though it was not uh, denoted as one by putting a ampersand right there, okay? So that actually doesn't even work. That probably won't even compile. You'll probably get an error or something like that. But I think the re I don't know the exact reason for this, but I assume the reason they made it like this is because, um, well, let's say that you want to copy one array over to um, another array. You might think that you could just do like poop array like that is equal to, um, cool array. So basically you might think that um, the cool array, all the contents of cool arrays being copied to poop array, but that's not actually how arrays work. You have to actually loop through each uh, element of the array and then set it to each element of the other array. So I, I think it's basically the same thing for uh, function parameters. Um, you can't just, you know, it's probably hard to just copy that entire array over as a parameter. I don't really know, I'm just speculating, but anyway, that's pretty much it for that. Hopefully you understand how um, reference variables work. Again, just to recap, they are basically a way for you to return more than one variable, but more importantly, it's basically a way to um, alter the arguments that were passed to the function so that you can edit them outside of the function and inside of the function at the same time, basically, okay? Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about what I showed you today, you can ask in the comment section below, or you can join our Discord server. Um, that would be cool. There's a link for our Discord server in the description below so you can check it out and you can ask for help there. You can leave suggestions for future videos, anything like that. And then also I'll leave the code for this episode in the description below also so you can uh, come back to it at any point without having to watch the whole video again, even though that would probably give me some good ad revenue. Just kidding. But um, anyway, that's it. So if you have any questions, like I said, let me know. If you like this video, leave a like. If you need to see more, subscribe and peace.